Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have another first for the channel so really quite looking forward to this. We're going to do my first beer review of a beer from Northern Ireland. You've heard me grumble on the channel quite a lot before about how difficult Irish beers are to get both from the North and from the Republic so I'm really interested to try this one and see how we get on with it. When I was in Glasgow the other day I managed to pick up four beers, two from the North and two from the Republic so hopefully you guys watching over there enjoy these reviews over the next little while but today we're going to go to the small town of Comer in County Down and do my first visit to Farmageddon Brewing Cooperative. This one is their India Export Porter and it comes in at 5.2% so it should be really nice. It was rated 87 overall in rate beer and 39 within the porter category so that tells you it should be a little bit kind of quirky uh, in regards to what you normally expect from the porter category. It's got some orange zest added to it so it probably will be a little bit more of a kind of hoppy porter and fruit porter than you'd normally expect but it's got a good rating and I've heard good things about this brewery as well so hopefully you guys enjoy the review and hopefully I enjoy this beer as well and hopefully we do get some more Irish beers over here in Scotland over the next little while so anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Farmageddon Brewing very first time I'm trying one of their beers like I said there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do subscribe to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of the beers from different countries as well as the whiskey reviews sake reviews interviews all the other things that are on the channel and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review especially if you're watching over on the emerald dial and as always your support of the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Farmageddon then. So Farmageddon Brewing are based in Comer in County Down in Northern Ireland and it was actually founded by seven friends. So this is Mark, Owen, John, Sue, Rose, Aaron and Andrew and these guys were all home brewing enthusiasts and apparently they also have a big appreciation for martial arts and punk rock as you can probably tell by the label on the beer. But they collectively decided that they wanted to turn their hobby into a business and so they founded the company officially in 2013. So the name Farmageddon actually comes from a conversation they had one night about what they would need to survive the zombie apocalypse and the answer was basically the ability to brew beer and to be able to grow food and rear animals to survive this apocalypse and the group also share a really a kind of mutual appreciation for self-sufficiency so this is why they're using the cooperative model and uh, also I think they do a lot of things to make sure the process of them actually brewing brewing the beer is green. So the beers that they have contain no preservatives or fish byproducts. This means that they're vegan friendly and one of the interesting things I read about this brewery as well was that in early 2016 they approved a £100,000 investment to actually grow the brewery because of increasing demand for their beers. They did get some money I believe from the Northern Irish government or one of the funds set up by the Northern Irish government for growth to actually help them. So really quite cool. I think they had some money from the EU or something like that as well. So really cool to see that these guys are attracting interest both on the business side of things and I've heard very good things about the beers as well so from when I was on the website they had six different beers I think it was this one's had a different label previously as well the one that was on the website actually had a white label when I checked it out but yeah you should be able to get this one uh, I was told by the Northern Irish guy who I bought it from actually that it is forget that this brewery is getting fairly popular over there so like I say hopefully this is the tide turning and we're starting to find more Northern Irish and Republic of Ireland beers finding their way out of the Emerald Isle so yeah it should be really quite cool to have a look at this beer and as I say I hope you guys enjoy this as well so I'll just read the little blurb that's on the back of this one for you it says this beer is a bitter hoppy and chocolatey porter with an edge of citrus so we add orange zest to bring out the citrus notes from the Amarillo and Simcoe and cocoa is also used to bring out the chocolate flavours from the roasted malts and the other part of the label just tells you the things I told you a wee minute ago. So yeah, it should be really nice. As I said, 5.2% porter. It's got a little bit of orange zest added to it and it's got Simcoe and Amarillo hops in it. Amarillo, of course, is one of my favourite hops. I love the orange flavours that it gives you. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up the beer. Let me just bring up the camera. There you are. There you can see the almost kind of motorhead thing on the front of it there. That looks really quite nice. Reminds me of the, the motorhead symbol, like I say. Hail Lemmy, of course, rest in peace to the big man. There you can see it's a plain bottle cap on this one and it should be really nice. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Best before November 2017. So I'm filming this review for you in early January. So let's get this guy open then. 
So yeah, nice bit of a smoky opening then, and we'll get it out and into the glass. First notes you can pick up from the aroma, of course, are a little bit of the roasted malt, a bit of sweet chocolate, almost a kind of brown bready thing, as you, just as you open the bottle there, but we'll look at that more closely in a little second. So yeah, let's just set that back down. But as you can see, and as you would expect, this beer's poured a really kind of dark, ebony rosewood colour. There's a solid finger of a frothy, kind of light beige tan head on this one. There's some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there. It looks really nice. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can't see anything through this beer at all. It does look as if it would be quite clear. It's got a little bit of a ruby edge to it if I hold it up to the light, but it looks as if it would be quite clear. It's just a little bit it's just mainly the fact that it is so dark that you can't see through this beer but yeah it looks absolutely lovely so let's check out the aroma on this one then so yeah you know it does smell kind of as you would expect from the the porter i was expecting this one to be a little bit more fruity than it is in the aroma you can pick up a little bit of a uh, of kind of orange or the citrusy zest coming out of this one you can pick up that a little bit just on the back end of the nose but mainly you know, it's a kind of toasted brown malt in this one, or black malt, I should say. There's a little bit of the sort of coffee notes to it. It's almost got this kind of roasted, grainy, brown bread thing. It does remind me of some of the malts we get over here in Scotland, actually. But it doesn't smell too different to what you'd expect from a porter normally. So, yeah, some roasted chocolate in there. Sorry, roasted malt and some sweet chocolate, I should say. Not roasted chocolate at all. So there's some brown breads just kind of underpinning that. There's a wee bit of earthiness from the hops, I think, in there as well. But you can get a little bit of orangey fruit. That'll be the Amarillo or the kind of citrusy zest coming out. Normally you would expect passion fruit from Simcoe, but of course it can change a little bit when you mix it with the dark malts. But really this beer definitely leans towards the malty side of things. There's a little bit of earthiness from the hops, like I say, some kind of orangey note definitely in there. But really... It's the malty side of things. A bit of chocolate, some toasted brown sugars in there maybe. That kind of typical brown bready thing. And also that those kind of roasted black coffee malt flavours or aromas coming out of this one. So has everything you'd expect from the porter, but if you read the bottle, it's not quite as fruity as you might have expected. So yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. But we are going to try this beer now. So this one's the India Export Porter from Farmageddon Brewing Cooperative over in Comer, County Down, Northern Ireland. Slanja. That's really quite light in the mouthfeel, of course. That's the main kind of difference between the porter and the stout, of course. The porter tends to use a kind of lager yeast or a pilsner yeast or something to give it that lighter mouthfeel rather than the kind of heavier, creamy thing that you'd expect from stout. So that's a wee point of order for you. But yeah, this one's definitely light and kind of easy drinking. You know, it doesn't... It's nowhere near as citrusy as I was kind of expecting when they're saying they've added the, the kind of a uh, citrusy zest to this one. It does that. You would expect a wee bit more of that. It does kind of taste just like a kind of fairly straight up porter to me, honestly. Yeah, you know, there's a wee bit of it from the. Uh, just at the back of the tongue there if you just pay attention to that little oily bubble that comes out behind the front curve of your tongue obviously of course this is where you find a lot of the hop oils and things there is a wee bit of an orangey citrus there but it does really kind of get engulfed by the darker more malty aspects of the beer the middle of your palate is where a lot of the complexity of this one is so you can feel that kind of brown bready character just blanketing itself across the middle of your palate. There's a lot of roasting and kind of black malty character in there. It's not quite as smooth as coffee. There is a little bit of that coffee smoothness more in the middle of the palate, but the rest of it is a more kind of roasted black malt character rather than that smoother aspect you expect from coffee. There's maybe a little bit of a kind of toasted brown sugar in there but not much it doesn't quite have the, the sweetness that you'd expect for that it really is more kind of roasted black malt that is just underpinning this beer maybe a little bit of chocolate too but like I say I really think it's the black malts and a little bit of that coffee smoothness is just making up this beer. It's the black malt's underpinning it but in the middle of the palate like I say it's a bit smoother like coffee and there's a bit of 
kind of toasted, roasted black, uh, brown sugar in there, sorry. But the hoppy side is quite interesting too, so in the back corners of the palate I'm getting quite a bit of bitterness there and it's an earthy bitterness that's coming out. As you come further forward it does start to smooth out a little bit, you can pick up just a little bit of a floral aspect to the beer, but really it's the earthiness that's kind of underpinning this one and it's a lot lighter around the front curve of your palate there as well. So it's, it's quite interesting just to kind of pick up the, the different flavours in this beer, but there is a little bit of that kind of orange zesty character in that little oily bubble where the hop oils normally come out on the tongue. But yeah, I think as the beer starts to warm up a little bit more, you get a wee bit more of that juicy character there. One of the things that you always have to look at when it comes to beers, and they're adding kind of fruit and, uh, and things like this to the beer is you'll notice it on the edge of your palate rather than that little curve or that little bit behind the front curve of the tongue because if you extract the hot, the fruit flavours from the hop oils you always detect it in this little bit behind the, uh, the sort of front curve of your tongue but if it's an addition to the brew it does tend to come out for me at least more in the on the edges of the palate where you'd normally expect the hoppy side of things so it's quite an interesting point that just that you can pick up little things like this from the mouthfeel of the beer But definitely, as the beer is starting to warm up, I'm getting more and more of this slightly orangey character coming out of the beer. I'm not really getting much of the way in, in terms of red fruits, which is what you sometimes get from this beer category. But as you progress into the aftertaste, it's more of that kind of toasty, grainy character. It does start to smooth out a little bit, the sort of brown, bready flavours in this one. And the earthy hop is just sitting in there as well but overall it really is quite a nice beer and it is quite different to what you'd normally expect from a porter normally they can be really kind of big and bitter with the sort of roasted black malts the coffee-ish flavours this one really is a bit more smooth and kind of straight up it's actually quite an easy drinking porter this one and obviously I would never session a porter myself I have to admit I do like tasting these beers every so often but I'd never really drink more than one of them but this one is one that you could potentially session. I do know one or two people who like to session dark beers a little bit more. But for me, of course, they always are tasters. This beer does remind me a little bit of the uh, the Holy Cowbell from Beaverton. It has a little bit of that kind of feel to it, almost like one of these India Stout things. Just the mouthfeel is a little bit lighter. So it is quite interesting. As I said, the sort of citrusy character that's in this beer does build a little bit more as it progresses but on the basis of this one I really would be interested to try some of their other beers if they are kind of hop heads on this one you can see them really leaning more towards that in this style of beer the earthy hoppy character in this one is quite nice and I do like how they've complemented that with the way they've done the malt base as well so it's a really quite nice beer in terms of porters I'd recommend this one to people who like some of the roasted black malts and an earthy hoppiness this is a beer that's really going to suit you or you're really going to enjoy if these are the sort of flavours that you per that you personally like and the wee citrusy addition to it as well does make it quite interesting too so yeah give it a go and see what you think in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer I'd say it's quite light bodied and you know that is something you expect from the porter as I was explaining with the difference between stouts earlier but this one is kind of light bodied in terms of the porter it could maybe just lean a little bit towards the, the heavier side of things actually but it is a fairly drinkable one the carbonation is quite smooth it's just got a little bit of a prickle the, it's more of a wet mouthfeel than an oily mouthfeel I'd say the malt base in this one is quite smooth although it does have a little bit of bitterness from the toasted grains the hoppy side of things it is actually quite a, a good there is a good bit of bitterness from this one like I say it's quite earthy and that builds as you move further into the flavour and there's a bit of kind of juicy citrusy character from this beer again which builds at one as your mouth adjusts to the beer and two as the beer sort of uh, gains in temperature a little bit as it increases in temperature but overall it's really quite an interesting beer this one and I can see why it has the rating it does not rate beer it is a really quite solid beer but in terms of what you'd normally expect from a porter it is a little bit different just because of the way the sort of juiciness and the, 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 pro the, the juiciness comes out of the beer and the way the hops are in this one too so it really is a more earthy and kind of a toasted bready character that comes out of this one and the citrusy 
elements just make it quite interesting too so it is quite quirky but it is really quite enjoyable that's probably a good way to sum up my thoughts on this beer so yeah it been really cool to review my first beer from Northern Ireland Farmageddon Brewing Cooperative hopefully I can try one of their IPAs or something as I always say when you're reviewing beers it's always cool to try something from the lighter side of things like the IPA and also something from the darker side and that kind of lets you see their approach to the beer so hopefully I can review one of their IPAs or a golden ale or something like that from these guys in the near future they have they're always producing new beers as I say check out the brewery website and the Facebook page and things in the description below do let me know your own thoughts on this beer if you happen to have tried it yourself always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the channel but as always thank you for watching my beer reviews and until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff do check out my social media but most importantly support your local craft breweries and do have a go at some of these Farmageddon beers if you come across them as I say this one is definitely for fans of earthy hops and roasted malt and a little bit if, if you're quite into citrus as well this one could be an interesting beer for you to try so yes thank you for watching and until the next time it's landed just now this one's the india export porter from farmageddon brewing cooperative over in county down in northern ireland it's landed just now